Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 35 entitled Azure Role-Based Access Control. My name is Tim Warner. Today's objective in the AZ 900 Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain starts with the functional group Describe Identity Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features. The objective is Describe Core Identity Services, and our skill is Describe the Functionality and Usage of RBAC. As you can see on the right of this slide, go to timw.info forward slash az900sg to look at the interactive table of contents for this course. I've hyperlinked all the videos I've produced to date. Let's get started. First of all, what is a role? If you're familiar with drama or acting, a role is an assignment, a character assignment, isn't it? But in business, and in particular, in information security, a role is a job role. You may be an ordinary business user who has no administrative need at all within your business's IT infrastructure. You may be an application developer or an administrator, in which case you would need elevated permissions. You might, for instance, be tasked with managing virtual machines in your Azure subscription. By contrast, maybe you don't get any access to the virtual machine resources, but you should have privileges to log into those virtual machines. You see what I mean? So the idea with a role is that a role is simply a named collection of permissions that align to a particular task set. RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control, and that is the authorization method used in Microsoft Azure, and those permissions are actually called operations under the hood. The idea at base is that we want to do least privilege authorization in which all of our Azure users have enough authorization and permissions to do what they need to do, but no extra. We don't want to overprivilege anybody because that needlessly expands the attack surface, the vulnerability surface of your Azure implementation. This is a slide that I like a lot. It shows the different management scopes in Azure. The attribution is in the lower left corner. You can see that starting at the bottom, we've got individual resources like Azure SQL databases, virtual machines, storage accounts, and those are always deployed in the context of a resource group. The resource groups are always deployed in the context of a subscription. That's your payment method to Microsoft. And there's a level above that called the management group that allows businesses to apply role-based access control to multiple subscriptions at once. Because the point is that when you do RBAC permissions, those permissions flow by inheritance from the current scope down to all child scopes. Now, there's a few roles that are particularly important for resources, that is for management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and resources. Owner is the highest privileged role, so you want to be extraordinarily careful who has owner permissions. Reader is a built-in role that's on the other end of the spectrum where you can view resources, but you can't make any modifications at all. You can also, using programmatic methods like Azure PowerShell, create your own custom resource roles in order to fit where you've got authorization requirements in job roles that don't match exactly with what the built-in roles that Microsoft provides give you. Now, besides the Azure resources, there's another whole collection of RBAC roles in Azure Active Directory. The most powerful of those roles is called Global Administrator, and again, that's the one that you want to secure above all others. Most Azure AD users are just going to be members of the user role. That's the default baseline role where you get no administrative privileges and you can view your user account properties and so forth, but that's really about it. You can nowadays create custom roles for Azure AD as well. However, the support for that is pretty limited as of this recording in June 2020. Now, as I said, role-based access control works by inheritance, and they're also additive, not subtractive, which means if you give somebody contributor access at the management group scope, contributor is pretty powerful. It's not quite as powerful as owner, but it's almost as powerful. That user will have contributor all the way down through subscriptions, resource groups, and resources. And if you decide that a user should have limited permissions further down the scope, so if you give them contributor at the management group level and give them read at the resource group level, guess what? They will still have contributor because the roles are additive. This means that as an Azure administrator and security professional, you really want to plan your role-based access control carefully. You might want to start strict reader at the management group level and then relax the permissions as you move down through subscription, resource group, and resource. 
In this demonstration, I'm going to show you just the high-level basics of role-based access control, not only for Azure resources, but also Azure Active Directory. As a matter of fact, let's start in the Azure portal by going to our Azure Active Directory instance, and let's pick on one of my users here. These are all lab users, fictional for the most part. Let's pick on Melissa Gone. Let's just say that she's a new hire in our organization, and eventually she'll need some kind of administrative privilege within our subscriptions. But let's say that she is going to manage a team, and we want to delegate her the ability to create user accounts in Azure Active Directory. So we're not going to give her the entire keys to the kingdom, so to speak, but we want to do least privilege access. What we can do in Azure Active Directory is go to Assigned Roles, and we can add assignments directly from here. But you know what would be particularly useful, I think? Let me open up an in private window and let's log in as Melissa so we can see the before and after of her access. So let's sign in with her Azure Active Directory sign in, put in her password if I can remember it. Yep, we'll stay signed in. And if we have Melissa go to Azure Active Directory, I just want to verify that because she doesn't have any administrative privileges, even if she went to the users list, she wouldn't be able to create a new user. The button is grayed out. Similarly, if she were to go to resource groups to look at resource access, there's nothing here. She hasn't been given any permissions at all. Well, we're going to fix that right now. Coming back to my administrative session, for her user account in Azure AD, let's go to Add Assignments. And this is the list of built-in and potentially custom Azure Active Directory roles. And let's see if there's a, a match for us here. There is a user administrator group, and it says in the description that you can manage all aspects of users and groups, including password resets. However, I happen to know that user administrator role membership does not allow the person to make themselves an administrator, nor or can they do any operations on other administrative accounts? So this is a good example of a sub-administrative role. So click Add, and now she does instantly have that ability. Well, instantly after she logs in again. <laughs> she does have to refresh her access token. So that gives her some privileges in Azure Active Directory. Now, as far as the resources go, let me browse on over to my resource groups, and let's give her read access to the Tim resource group. We're just going to start her off really low where she can come in and browse the resources, but she won't be able to make any changes to them. And we can adjust that permission in time if we need to. For Azure Resources, we go to Access Control IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. And we'll do Add, Add Role Assignment. We'll choose a resource role from the list. Remember, owner is the most powerful, contributor is next most powerful, and then reader is what we'll do. Let's search our directory for her username, select and save. And so now at this point, if we go to role assignments in that resource group and scroll down under reader, notice that we have Melissa gone. Now, I mentioned permissions inheritance. Let me go back to overview for this Tim resource group and let's take a look inside of it. See how there's a bunch of resources? Let me just check this automation account. Should Melissa gone have any access to this child resource? What do you think? Well, we're going to check it now by going to Access Control IM, typing her sign in, looking her up. This is a really neat check access tool that's built in here. And now we can see that her role assignment has been inherited from the resource group, and she's just a reader. Okay? Now, to test this out, let me switch over to Melissa's session. And as I said, she's going to have to refresh her access token. So we're going to sign out, and then we're going to sign back in as Melissa. Again, provide the password, obviously. Have to type it correctly. There we are. And first, let's head on over to Azure Active Directory. And you're going to see on the overview page that her role is listed as user administrator. Her original administrative role was nil. It was just user. Now she's user administrator, which means if we go to the user's blade, aha, looks like I was wrong. The new user is still grayed out, but I'll bet she can do user management tasks. Like, let me select this Edgar Allan Poe account, and let me see if I can reset his password. Yep, it looks like user administrator grants you the ability to modify user accounts, but not create them. That's a great example of real-world role-based access control, because I find in the real world that rarely do I get a resource assignment just perfect the first time. What I'm going to need to do now, it seems to me, is go through in my Azure Active Directory tenant and look at the administrative roles and figure out which one is the best match. And you can do that in Azure Active Directory by going to Roles and Administrators. And I'm going to do some 
further research here. Now, Melissa certainly doesn't have enough permissions to create a role. That's why new custom role and delete custom role are both grayed out. I would need to do that as an administrator. Point to ponder, point to ponder. To finish this demo, let's go over to resource groups. And now we see Tim because we've given her that reader role-based access control assignment. So if we come into Tim, she should be able to view the properties of all of these resources, but she shouldn't be able to do anything with them. So for example, if she were to go to this Azure automation account, notice that the delete is actually out of reach. It's grayed out. So this is verification that our least privileged access is working properly for her. Okay, for learning resources in the Azure documentation, first on Azure Role-Based Access Control Basics, hit up timw.info forward slash RBA1. If you're interested in knowing more about how to do custom RBAC roles, go to timw.info forward slash RBA2. And third, if you want to understand a little bit more about the inheritance permission model and how the deny assignment works, go to timw.info forward slash RBA3. And parenthetically, I say, if you find that you're very interested in the security stuff, I want to draw your attention to the Azure Security Engineer badge. You have to pass the AZ500 certification exam to earn that one, or the Azure Administrator badge, which is AZ104. In the meantime, I, as always, I want to thank you for hanging with me through this series. In the next episode, we're still doing security. We'll cover Azure policy. Find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. If you want more of my courses, you can go to Pluralsight. My author page is timw.info forward slash ps. And my website's techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Happy studying. See you around.